Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calder Ness. This week we're going to be talking about the Game Trade Magazine uh, Future Foundation spoilers. We're going to be talking about the drop of House of X, and we're going to be answering some listener questions from our man in Japan, Malcolm Rush. This is episode 345. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. <laughs> Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5 for 5% off your order. That's D-I-A-L-5 for 5% off your order. Galactus is $20 off right now. You can save an extra 5% with our awesome code. And who doesn't want to do that? So check it out at CoolStuffInc.com. Dot com. Uh, joining me as always in the studio is the Dial H for Hero Clicks World Heavyweight Champion, uh, the Billion Dollar Bruce. How's it going, Simeon? Yeah, I, I don't bleed anymore. I'm just on the the Dial H Hero Clicks Health and Wellness Program. I'm clean. Mm. Uh, okay. Uh, you've never you never even cut a promo like that before. I don't know why we're doing this, <laughs> but here we are. All of a sudden. <laughs> Okay. Out there been claiming I've been juicing. Yeah. The oh, one look I at you and I can tell you definitely don't. The orange. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, sure. Let's go with that. Um, well, obviously what made you happy this week was getting off your last trend cycle. So that's big. Good job, Simeon. Glad you're not juicing anymore. Yeah, just uh, people don't know what trend balone acetate is. It's good stuff. Literally none of that will help you build muscle, but okay. Uh, why, why don't you tell us what made you happy this week, my yeah, man? That might actually put you in a coma if that's all you take. Uh, it's good yeah, to eat no, actual food. Hurt a lot. Don't starve yourself. Nor should you just say prayers and eat vitamins. You should actually no, have a more no, no, rounded no. diet than vitamins. Yeah. Also, homeopathy <laughs> is fake. None of that's real. Don't even bother. Uh, what made me happy this week is X-Men dropping. And uh, it made me happy because I looked at the prices and I did a 180. I was going to buy into this set. I am no longer buying into this set. And that made me happy because I have more money to spend on Future Foundation. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, I don't, I don't like being... A downer about like hero click sets i like to think that like there's there's some good stuff in each set man oh man where people starved for this set and they're taking it out on me they want my money so bad and i'm not giving it to them i'm not nope no money for you especially well, chad that's Birdsall. enough about chad birds all there it is same wavelength bricks. Knew it. i hope you can make a house out of that those 24 <sighs> bricks because i'm gonna blow it down Gosh, Chad, that's insane. That makes me the so Chad much, wolf, and you know what that makes Chad Birdsall. So, <laughs> I think actually, so he doesn't gosh. even listen to the show. He does. I. <laughs> it really shows. Like, I don't know why I even talk to him. I don't know. He doesn't listen. He clearly yeah. talks to us. I don't know why? <laughs> I talk to but him. I'm like multiple times a week. Sometimes. Where do I even every know you from? What do you have to talk to me about? <laughs> you don't listen to my show. Do you even know I do a yeah. show, Chad? I don't think he does. He I think didn't. he just like It was like I knew it. Several well, he knows you do. <laughs> it was like several months into me doing the show <laughs> before he found out that I also was on the show. <laughs> and this hilarious. was like me and him talking like every other day. Like we we uh message on Discord almost all the time. Uh, but yeah, come on, Chad, come join the show. That that aside, I'll let you. That be a aside, patron. I actually really like Chad. Chad's a cool. Yeah, I'll let you be a patron too, Chad. <laughs> that, that's fine with me. You clearly have enough to spend if you're getting twenty, <laughs> twelve cases, tw twenty four bricks of this set. Good lord! I don't know if we should call um, him out that bad, but uh, he has oh, a problem. Pff, Chad. Someone should. Chad's a him. cool guy. You know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call him out if I didn't have such good talks with him. Some Chad's a cool guy. He's fine. I like talking to him. He's one of the few uh, 
hero clicks marvel legends collectors that understands and action figure collectors in general just knows about the the waste of money that is the combination of being a hero clicks player and an action figure collector uh albeit he definitely spends more than i do which is you know good for chad good for chad he's given me some life advice too he really has uh not that i would probably take it um <laughs> yeah he's he's definitely told me with the way i am let's see how to say it quote built I could be making a lot more money than I am now. <laughs> uh, and then he followed it by giggity. And, and I'm just going to leave leave that where it is. Uh, Chad's I mean, a great guy. To be fair, with the way he's built, he could also be making a lot more money. <laughs> Probably true. <laughs> Have you seen that dump truck he carries around with him? My God. Is this a Anyways, Heroclix podcast? Uh, uh. This is a Heroclix podcast, but oh. I'm going to do what made me happy this week. Because we've been talking for five minutes about Chad Birdslaw. Um, Heroclix player, at least. I don't even know. I can't remember the last time he's played a game of Heroclix. He's good at anyways, judging, that's for sure. He judges me all the time. Uh, anyways, uh, what made me happy this week? It's kind of a New Year's resolution I'm doing. And uh, don't worry, it's it's less cringe than it sounds when I say New Year's resolution. Uh, we'll get into that a little later with Malcolm's questions. But uh, I'm trying new things. And so I can't remember if I mentioned this when I did it. But I, I recently uh, enrolled in a wrestling school uh, near Sioux Falls. I, I am now two sessions in to my 20 session uh, wrestling school semester I'm doing here. And by wrestling, I mean uh, professional wrestling, not any of that creepy stuff where two dudes like try to grapple each other or something creepy like that that they do in high school and college. No, they, they do that in professional wrestling too. They do that, uh, they do that in professional <laughs> wrestling too, but like that's the lame wrestling. This one's yeah. got the ropes and stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, I shouldn't the say cool that. Wrestling I'm actually with really good friends with the guy that wrestled. In the pinches. Yeah, with the slaps and the punches and the kicks and the all that jazz. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm two, days, I'm two days into this and I'm feeling pain in my body that I've never felt before ever in my entire life. I, I Everything hurts. My back is on fire all the time. My neck hurts like crazy. My neck has never, never hurt before. Not like this. It's hard to... I feel like I need to uh, to wear a brace um, just because, oh my gosh, my neck hurts like crazy. But it's been really cool. Everybody's really cool um, when it comes to learning everything. I mean, I'm bad at it. I'm bad. Like, I'm athletic and stuff, right? Um, but the things they're asking me to do is like, mem- basically, you need to like memorize moves, know where to be, and also act at the same time. Big respect uh, for DJ Riggin who is also a professional wrestler um, doing like the indie scene, wherever he's uh, from. I have no idea, honestly. It's a lot um, of like, yeah, but yeah knowing how to position yourself so that you don't hurt yourself I, or your partner. Cause they're not yeah. really, I mean, you're kind of opponents, but you're not really opponents. You don't actually want to kill the guy that you're wrestling. And it's quite possible to do so if you land wrong or they land wrong. Uh, yeah, exactly. Which is what I'm so worried about. Like the first night they were like, yeah, go ahead, power slam this guy. And I'm like, I can pick him up because he's smaller than me. So that's no problem. But it's, you don't want to actually slam him to the mat with force. You just sort of want to let go. I don't want to ruin anyone's perceptions of professional wrestling here. But you just sort of want to like let go and let him fall type of deal. Um, I didn't slam him to the mat or anything. But like it's it's tough to like learn how to like do stuff. Um I have I get very nervous in things like my feet like dance all over the place and I just need to like slow down. But it's been cool. It's been fun. Uh, This will probably be the last time I talk about it unless unless I die somehow. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if my neck gets snapped. Honestly, my neck hurts so freaking much. Uh, So, yeah, it's great. More about this after you die. We'll have you back after I die. Yep. (laughs) Yes, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, (laughs) But yeah, so I'm I'm coming for that. Sorry, wait. I'm gonna. I don't want to do the same voice you did. I'm a man in a boy's world, and you're just a boy. Who I I even messed up how he messed up. I honestly don't know how Kurt does this. Anyways, <clears throat> here's what I'm gonna say to you, Simeon Bruce, billionaire Bruce. I'm coming for that title. The rowdy ranch hands out here, and he's training. He's rolling dice. He's taking bumps. He's throwing slams. And you know what? It's coming for you sometime in the future when the set gets released about a week or two after the set gets released. I was going to say like January 31st, but like that's all kind of up in the air. We don't really know when sets are going to be released nowadays. So I'm coming for that title. I'm training. I'm doing what I can, baby. Oh, yeah. See, I still wanted the macho. I wanted to. 
And I shouldn't have. He's just I shouldn't such have. an I still iconic. Did the, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. It's easy to slip into. Um, I would do rich. No, nah, I can't do that. Cause he's his whole thing is he says one swear word really loud. So I can't do that. It's just so funny though. It's hilarious to listen to. Anyways. Uh, so yeah, that's what made me happy this week. We can now go on with the episode. Simeon. I think there's a little bit of news this week. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a bit. Not too much. So, Game Trade Magazine. They dropped, uh, earlier this week, they dropped some old previews that a bunch of people shared around for some reason, even though they're real old and should not be needed to share around again because they're old. Uh, but later, they uh, actually published on their website, instead of in their print magazine, some actual new previews. So we got Awesome Andy, number 039 in the set. He's a rare. We got Leech, 010. He's a common. We got The Wizard, 031A, uncommon. And then we got an image with some of the rogues and some of the Fantastic Four. So we got Reed in the Future Foundation with his uh, little triple symbol instead of the Fantastic Four logo, so that's when it was Reed, Sue, and the Thing. We've got, um, what's the little kid's name? Franklin Richards with his big old number five. We've got uh, Reed's dad, Nathaniel Richards, that's his name, with his cool old like super suit and shooting lasers. We got Herbie just floating there with his little Wally face. He's pretty cute. I'm going to get one. Uh, we got the what is that guy's name i want to call him the puppet master but that's not his name um with his little goop hands and his little goop monster oh, on a base um is he not the clay master jeez everybody's been talking about this guy is he not puppet master are we sure it might be i, I feel like for some reason, I drew a blank when I looked at his face. Ah, man. He's something Masters, right? Like, his last name is, like, literally Masters. Because Alicia is his daughter, the blind chick that, like, marries the thing. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna say Puppet talk about Because he, yeah. Yeah, he, he puppet, I don't, I don't know. For some reason, I'm drawing a blank. But, yeah, I actually think it, yeah, I know it's Puppet something. So It's I, the Puppet Master. Yeah. It's the Puppet Master, not um, Puppet Master. We yeah. also got the... Who's the weird Santa Claus dude? I can't remember his oh, name. Dude, it's Red Ghost. Red yeah. Ghost. <laughs> Red Ghost. Anders Apes. Which we've, the, we've got one uh, a little while ago. Um, Smart Ape in Supernova ago, before cards existed. Yeah. yeah. I think we recently <laughs> played one or something. I don't know. In Thursday Throwdown. He just seems familiar-ish to me um, in the relative scheme of things. So those guys we didn't get. We got sculpt cool. yeah. 3D renderings. We didn't get uh, dials or any information on them. Look pretty cool. Uh, if I was going to say rarity based on that, uh, Reed is a solid common or uncommon. Red Ghost is also probably knock around the common, uncommon, maybe rare. Uh, Puppet Master is definitely going to be a super rare um, because he's got a 3D thing that comes with his base. Franklin, likewise, probably going to be a common. I'm guessing the first like five or six slots of the commons are going to be the main Fantastic Four. Nathaniel, probably super rare. And then Herbie, I'm pretty sure, was already uh, spoiled as a super rare, but I don't remember. But yeah, let's get into the dials a little mm, bit. I don't remember either. Uh, let's go with Leech. He has oh, stealth yeah. and outwit. That is it. Let's go with Awesome Andy. So this is number 039, the rare in the set. A rare in the set. Um, he has the Captain... Uh, I don't even know what we're calling that. The Captain uh, Co... Name, Co Power. Um, the Bubble Ability. I don't know. Title? Would it be a title, I guess? Sure. Sort of a goes above his name. Plate. Yeah. So yeah. this is Teacher Awesome Android. Um He's not the bad, awesome android. He is the teacher of the Fantastic Four one. Uh, so he's got Fantastic Four and robot keywords. He has a trait, you can be whatever you want. Friendly sidekicks can use shape change. If you remember from earlier, WizKids did an article with uh, captains and sidekicks. It is the same place where... Um, what was that text? 
that was also there. Is this the first time they've used text there? No, this is the same place where they put the... Um, secret identity. Secret identity thing, yeah. So it's it goes right above like the little image bubble on the card, but it's right where the secret identity uh, symbol or word was. So Awesome Andy is a captain. Leech is a sidekick. So let's see what like Awesome Andy can give to Leech. Uh, so you can be whatever you want. Friendly sidekicks can use shape change. So that's just across the board. Anyone that has a sidekick little bubble word can use shape change when Awesome Andy is on the board. He has a special defense power from clicks 1 through 5. It's uh, on his first click and also on his 35-point starting line. Um, and that ability is invulnerability when Awesome Andy or an adjacent friendly character succeeds on using shape change or is missed by an attack after resolutions remove an action token from that character which is pretty cool a uh, little extra bonus to shape change or just not getting hit and also if you're playing him with a bunch of sidekicks they all get shape change so that's just pretty solid all around he uh, starts with sidestep two clicks of super strength he goes to plasticity from clicks two through four seven speed from clicks one through four 10 attack all the way down to click 5, and then click 6 and 7, he has a 9 attack. He starts with an 18 defense, goes to a 17 from clicks 2 through 5, so the majority of his dial is a 17. Two clicks of 16. Uh, his damage is a 4 on click 1, and then the rest of his dial is click 3. Not a lot of, like, different stuff going on. So if you start him on click 70, or if you start him on a 70-point line uh, on click 1, he has sidestep super strength, the 18 defense with that special defense power, shape change. If you start him at 35 points, he has 6 speed sidestep, 10 attack, super strength, 17 defense with that special de defense power, and 3 damage with shape change. So, I feel like 2 awesome Andes at 35 points beats 1 awesome Andy at 70. But I'm not, I'm not positive, but I feel like 2 is better than 1. But, uh... He's pretty solid. Um, hmm. He's giant size, no other special combat symbols, not Indom or anything. He's just a fun little piece. He's got the Fantastic Four team ability. Um, I don't see myself playing him a whole lot at 70 points, but I definitely think I could fit one on my team for 35, especially if I'm playing a lot of sidekicks. And it looks like, uh, unlike the team-up ability cards... The sidekicks can just get multiple bonus powers from however many captains they have. So if there's a lot of cheap captains like this, you'll have some sidekicks that are super powered. This is going to be pretty nutty. Um, yikes. This is such a weird set to make this uh, mechanic in, but I'm you know cautiously optimistic about where it's going to go. Speaking of cautiously optimistic, oh boy... Not only is oh, really more speaking of new mechanics, not only are there captain and sidekicks, now we have allies. So your friendly neighborhood uh, wingless wizard, Mr. Whitman here, is our first ally we've seen. He's set number 031A. Um, he's the same wizard that was made in the last Fantastic Four set, and he's also going to have a prime version of himself. So we just we need more wizards, I guess, and his big stupid helmet and everything. So... He's got two traits, and then he has... Well, I'll, I'll check out his dial first. Uh, he's a wild card. He has the Fantastic Four team ability, and he has Fantastic Four and Scientist keywords, six range, flight, no other special combat symbols, full dial, a sidestep, three clicks of Quake, three clicks of ESD, and then on the back half, it's three clicks of Incapacitate, three clicks of Toughness, and then he has four clicks of Outwit, and then two clicks of Perplex. He's 60 points or 30 points. The 30-point slit is... 30-point cut, I guess, in the dial is going to be sidestep, incapacitate, toughness, outwit, and I'll have three more. He'll have three clicks there. So what do his traits do, him being an ally and all that? Well, he has sideline active, unique modifier, which means he costs nothing. You just go ahead and throw him on your sideline. Friendly captains and sidekicks modify attack by you plus one when attacking plus one characters with the scientist keyword. Not amazing. Not not even not even good really uh yeah. for a sideline slot super Whiz kids is super um niche thing like 
mm-hmm. in the off chance that you're playing against someone running a scientist keyword, really good. How often do you come against someone running a scientist keyword? Uh, I mean, and it doesn't have to be their whole team. It doesn't have to be a scientist theme team. But inside the set, he'll probably work wonderfully because I'm sure there's a ton of scientists in the set. Imagine sealed in this is going to be great. Yeah. If seal this app. Anyways, uh, his second trait is anti-grav discs. And this is where he's more offensive. Free, choose an opposing character than range and line of fire, which is, of course, six. He has no improved targeting, which is a little bit of a bummer. Uh, and you roll a d6. Knock that character back a number of squares equal to half the result in a direction of your choosing. That's pretty cool. You can kind of slam people around if you can. Pretty neat being able to choose the direction and everything. Uh, so, yeah, he's all right. I think for 30 points to fill out, a scientist or a Fantastic Four theme team. He's a wild card. He's got the Fantastic Four team ability. Uh, sidestep in cap, free knockback uh, with outwit is like fine for 30 points. I don't think I'd ever pay 60 for this guy. Uh, I don't see him being able to sidestep Quake with ESD that much, honestly. Um, and he still just has outwit. So I'd, I'd always only ever play him at 30. I don't think he's useful at all at 60. Um, and then the sideline active, I think WizKids might try to make more sideline active stuff. So that way your sideline yeah. feels more like you're kind of paying for it. You know, now even though it's ID free, cards are gone. you're technically uh, paying for it. Yeah. So without we... ID cards and sh- let me speak to me a damn. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I even did the, re- I still ended up saying it anyways. Anyways, uh, even without ID cards and there's way less shifting focus nowadays, it just seems like they're trying to have your sideline since it's going to be all free stuff anyways. Now that specific slot itself is going to have value. Okay, now go for it. Yeah, so the only... My biggest thing with like the sideline is... It used to be ID cards. So it was like you pay... I don't know. For a good ID card, like the Wolverine or Cyclops ID card, you're like shelling out 50 bucks, and then you're also shelling out another like 50 to 60 for the super rare uh, that goes on the ID card. So you're like $100 for the sideline thing. With the trouble alerts, they took that and combined it into like one payment of like, you know, depending on when you bought them or whatever, thirty dollars to I think Brainiac at one point was like a hundred and twenty or something. Um, for like a single sideline character. So in my opinion, it's really cool that uh, the allies and the alter or super identities or alter egos or whatever uh, it's really cool that those come in the uncommon, common, rare slots because they're super cheap. They still work really well for your team sometimes, uh, especially with like secret identity. And your sideline isn't just completely empty if you don't want to like shell out the money for troublers and troublemakers. So I really like that they're mm-hmm. moving forward with that idea. I'm not crazy about the text being next to the set number as it is. Uh, I don't know how else they would do it, though, so I guess that's fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, him being an ally, we really didn't have a heads up until this figure came out, <laughs> until this was shown. We didn't really have a heads up about what the sideline active thing was going to be. Uh, they talked about the captains and the sidekicks, but they didn't mention the allies. So it'll be really interesting to see how many of these and what all they do. Because I could see, I mean, on a Fantastic Four theme team, I'm probably already relegating at least three or four slots for the Sue storm ability to swap people in and out. Um, but I might have to add a few slots for these sideline active people. They don't have to share the keywords cause they're not actually on my force, but mm. uh, as long as they're an ally, they might have a position on my sideboard. That's pretty cool, especially for an uncommon. Yeah. To go back to the uh, sealed part of the discussion a little bit, what I like about it, and it feels good we're talking more about this guy than uh, Awesome Andy, but uh, anyways, what I like about this guy is that how many times in Sealed do you just have like random commons or uncommons left over and you're just like, well, I can't put them on the team. Now you can at least chuck this guy on a team. It's not very useful, but if there's more like him, when you're building out of the two boosters and you're not able to use everything on your team, you can still put something on your sideline where that wasn't much of a thing with the Justice League and Batman sets because they were chases. So you were normally, if you pulled them, you're probably going to play them for sure. Uh, Maybe not all of them. Some of them are bad, right? So a lot of them did probably see sideline play. But just now that I'm seeing this is going to be a more common or uncommon level rarity thing, 
I could see like just SEAL teams having sideline because normally yeah. a SEAL team is just never utilized in your sideline at all. It'll so this is kind of cool. As well, uh, until we get like an actual unboxing, we won't know for sure. But depending on the distribution, you might in every booster have multiple captains, sidekicks, and allies. Like you might have two allies, a captain, and like one sidekick. I don't know how many characters aren't going to have that mechanic in this set, but if every character in the set has that mechanic, it's going to be pretty wild. Uh, sealed, yeah, for sure. You could be like, oh my gosh, well, I got my not every team, character, but I guess. here's my three characters left over that are going to be on the sideline. Maybe they help, maybe they don't, but. Oof, that, ugh, that's going to be wild. It's going to be really wild. Uh, but all right, that is it for the Future Foundation stuff. Did we want to talk at all, honestly, about House of X? I have nothing to really say about it being released. It's released now. That's all I have to say about it. If you want to talk about it, you can. Yeah, then that'd out. be it for news. Um, yeah, it's say, out. Uh, be a little wary of buying sealed for House of X. I don't want to like be the chicken little whatever, but I have seen in multiple cases... Um, not my own personal multiple cases, multiple cases of people buying sealed product, that distribution isn't amazing, that there's a lack of super, sometimes only the typical brick of hero clicks will have three super rares, almost always guaranteed um, in either one prime or one chase. That's been pretty much typical for the last, uh, I want to say like f four or five years at least. Um, with the very, very odd brick not having something like that. But um, I've heard from multiple sources that House of X sometimes only has two super rares, and sometimes a brick does not have a prime or chase. So you might get a brick that only has two super rares, and then the rest is just rares. There's no prime, there's no chase. So just be a little bit wary if you're buying into the set. I don't want to dissuade anyone from buying into the set, because... There are some really cool pieces. I want to pick up a few pieces. I'm just a little bit wary of uh, buying the sealed because it seems bad. <laughs> yep, it sure does. Well, then that's going to wrap it up for news this week, guys. Let's go ahead and get into community. There are dozens of us. Uh, normally, this is the part of the show where we do a community Tuesdays question. But as we are still reeling in from... All the cool stuff that we've been talking about. Uh, we once again forgot Community Tuesdays this week. Honestly, it was not even a thought in my brain uh, that we missed it. So here we are. Uh, instead, we do, however, have some Malcolm Rush questions to get to. So let's go do that right now in a Malcolm Rush question block. That's in Japan. Japan? No, 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 no. I can't go to Japan. Malcolm writes, since we are now in 2021, let's ask questions about 2021. So the sets that have been announced so far, which ones are you looking forward to? And what Heroclix characters do you want? would you want to be included? Simeon. All right. Sets have been announced so far. Which ones I'm most looking forward to? Uh, Future Foundation. Like Future Foundation. Yeah, definitely. Wonder Woman, um, WWE. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were listing the ones that I'm excited for. I am a little excited yeah. for Wonder Woman. Uh, I will say, in the grand scheme of things that have been announced, it's third. So take that for what it is. Um, never been a huge Wonder Woman fan, but I am interested in like fleshing out like some of her rogues and side characters for sure. Just I don't need like seven variations of Wonder Woman. So oh, you're definitely getting the, seven, uh, if not more. Oh yeah. I'll be happy it's with the be a lot. objects, though. Um, so, I don't know. Number one's a tie between Future Foundation and uh, WWE Wave 2. Um, we haven't seen a lot from WWE Wave 2 other than sculpts. Uh, we've seen all the sculpts, just haven't seen any of the dials. Yeah. I'd be super ecstatic if they did a little bit of different stuff that they didn't do in Wave 1. A tag mm -hmm. team mechanic would make me probably put it in like the number one slot. Uh, I'm already going to buy one of each, so that's probably my number one set, my number one hope. Um, right on. And then from Fantastic Four, I really hope they fill out a lot of the rogues because we didn't get a ton of the bad dudes in the first Fantastic Four set. So getting some of the newer ones like Entropy, um, stuff like that, getting an actual physical Molecule Man would be cool to actually have a 
figure instead of a bystander. That'd be awesome. We should get that. That's something we should have. Okay, right on. Uh, for me, it's no contest. I'm crazy excited for WWE Wave 2. I've had those figures on pre-order for a while now, uh, so I can't wait until they finally come out. Uh, I would love, randomly, if somehow Sting comes out in all of those as well. I don't know where he's being. What's he doing? Nothing. You don't think he's for sure about Sting. Nothing around. for sure. Exactly. And he'll be there for a year, I guess. Like It's just, I don't know where he's going to be. Uh, I would actually say... Depending on what's in it. So the way they're going to make Wonder Woman is probably going to be the way I wish Captain America was done, where they actually do it, where it's strictly her allies and her villains. And then maybe some fluff and less like random Justice League stuff. At least that's what I'm seeing so far yeah. with all the different versions of Wonder Woman. It so it like sucks that not going to he's getting that treatment and they can't get at the respect he deserves. Be like uh, Wonder but yeah. Woman and the Justice League. And then it's half Justice League rogues. League, yeah justice league and then one wonder woman and then let's throw in a lot of batman villains just yeah. because you know batman's out let's throw in a robin and like a damien and like a nightwing yeah and just ruin the set so the only thing i would be excited for in wonder woman is if they make a guy gardener and then if they do then i'd be inclined to get all the other green lanterns uh steal their construct pieces and then sell them without them because i don't need them uh, so I would just want Guy Gardner if they make him in that set. And if they do, it'd be great to have a yellow lantern, blue lantern, red lantern, the red and violet lantern version of Guy Gardner. Uh, literally all of them. But that's not going to happen. One of the objects get, like, was a lights. green lantern catcher. Yeah. Before, right. Yes. So, so we know of Hal and the new like little girl green lantern, whoever she is. Um, and even if you know who she is, listener, I do not care, obviously. Uh, so don't mind telling me. Don't worry about it. I don't, <laughs> unless it's Guy Gardner, I don't care about Green Lanterns. So, yeah. Uh, as far as future foundation, yeah, Blake probably does know. He's a nerd like that. Uh, anyways, don't tell him I said, I know some of you guys listen to the show. Blake is a nerd. You're all nerds. I'm a nerd. <laughs> it's, it's, not a, it's not an insult. It's calm down. Uh, anyways. When it comes to Future Foundation, I literally only care about James Hammond. The fact that the Human Torch is in it is cool. I'll Sweet. care about any other uh, any other invaders, and then that's it. There's Ooh. pretty much nothing in uh, Future imagine Foundation if, I would care about. Imagine if they give him the Living Legend trait. That'd be cool. That'd be great. Absolutely. I'd love for them to do that I with the old that. invaders. Like all the old invaders, anytime they remake them from now on, uh, just give them the Living Legends trait because. They definitely what else deserve in Marvel it. Do we have that's a living legend? For sure, for sure. Uh, so that'd be that'd be a wrap on question one here. Number two, what other sets do you want WizKids to put out for 2021, and what figures do you wish to be included? Now, keep in mind, there's already one DC set, so let's keep our answers to non DC because they've got their one for the year. Asking yeah. for any more is just ridiculous. I'm sticking it to strictly realistic stuff, so I'm not going to say any indie things that I know. WizKids probably doesn't have any property rights to currently. Um, so I can't think of anything Marvel related that's happening that's like interesting that I'd really need made. So I'd really love for them to make WWE Wave 2 and release it. That would be amazing mm. for 2021. If at some point in 2021 <laughs> they release WWE Wave 2, which we have had all of the digital renderings of for i want to say eight months oh. now 10 months now it's been before june because june's when it was supposed while. to come out so yeah it should be around eight or so months i thought yeah. it was coming out in 2020 uh, it'd be really great if we actually got it in 2021 uh to go along with that a tlc pack or a hell in the hmm. cell pack some sort of like starter set that was not just a ring. I'm cool with the ring. I'm glad that they're re-releasing a version of the ring. Hopefully it's not the same. It'd be awesome to get like a SummerSlam, uh, Backlash, uh, Survivor Series, some sort of like backdrop kind of thing. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. Even if it was just cool. like... On the apron. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it was just like stickers that you put on the apron... Um, or potentially like a campaign card or like a battlefield condition type thing that like changes what the ring does depending on which one you pick. So it's like, mm. oh, we're not just, it's not just like, you know, SmackDown. It's Survivor Series. And so the ring does this instead. 
I'd be super cool with that. But cool. I could see something like you could pull light objects out from under the ring if you're outside the ring. It's sort of like when you go in under it and you're grabbing yeah. like the chairs or the tables. That would be kind of neat. I would think do uh, that since the N64 days of WWF yeah. <laughs> before the World Wildlife Foundation stole the moniker. Those mm. thieving panda lovers and their claim to oh the God. thing that oh they had gosh. for years. How dare you take Vince McMahon's? Uh, I can't even say that with a straight face. Uh, but yeah, back when it was WWF, uh, the N64 games, you could pull weapons under out from under the uh, apron. And uh, I think it was WWF No Mercy, the greatest WWE game of all time. You could even pull out a Packers cheese head hat. Oh, really? Yeah. That's awesome. And it did the same amount of damage as the steel steps. So take that oh my for gosh. Windows. Okay. Uh, I'm kind of in line with Simeon here. Uh, I just want WWE Wave 2 to come out. That's literally it, you know? Uh, going beyond that, if I had to choose a set that hasn't been announced, um, and I feel like I'm still missing a set that's supposed to come out, besides like Wonder Woman and uh, Future Foundation and WWE, I feel like there's some other set, but I don't know what it is. Maybe I am just had a fever dream and I thought of something. But um, I would really like a sequel to Earth-X, a Paradise or Universe-X set. Uh, I would heavily enjoy that. Recently, I read the Marvel's X or whatever it's called, Earth-X, the new series that came out, which explained origins of a certain Earth-X character. But in that series, it also showed several designs and new characters like uh, Johnny Blaze in the Earth-X universe is really cool uh, and several other characters, which would be great. Um, that's actually sort of before the events of Earth X, which is really neat. So there's some more figures you could do there. And like I've said before about Earth X, there are a ton of figures they missed last time. They did not have to have a crappy Spider-Man sub theme, which is just awful. I hate it. I hate Spider-Man. Um, <laughs> so we can do a Captain America sub theme instead and actually have the all winter squad, the Captain America Corps, the invaders, all those people that should have been in the Captain America set can now be in an Earth X or Paradise X slash Universe X a uh, sequel set, which would be really cool. Um, that being said, more stuff that are specifically from Paradise X could be something like the Wendigo virus uh, and a few other things like that. I honestly can't remember all that much. It's not as ingrained in my mind as the original story. Um, there's also the baby Captain Marvel would be kind of funny uh, as a figure. I think it'd be cool if you also did another Ultra Chase and his baby Captain Marvel would be hilarious. Um, if we did uh, a Mount Rushmore map, I would love that. There's this great scene uh, in this Captain America one-shot Universe X comic where he's saving a uh, little baby Captain Marvel, and there's like a village of people that live on top of Mount Rushmore, um, and it's crazy. So like those as generics and a Mount Rushmore map would be awesome. As I am from South Dakota, I think it'd be really cool. So yeah, uh, a Paradise X Universe X set would be amazing to fill out the holes we missed in the first set. If you want to not do everybody has the Earth X keyword. You could either make a new Paradise X keyword or like you did in the Earth X set. Instead, have sub themes that have nothing to do with Earth X and instead make them Captain America themed, which I think would be cool. So number also, three, give them a team ability called Earth. EX that works exactly like the KC team ability because Earth X is the Marvel equivalent of KC. So why exactly. don't we have it? It should just, it it's should also have been done. a better story, <laughs> but yeah, it really should have. Uh, it makes no sense that they didn't, that they didn't have that team ability. It, it literally makes zero sense. The only reason they don't have that team ability is because they did not have the foresight uh, to give the first Captain Earth X Captain America they made back in like 2017 or whatever uh, yeah. a team ability. Uh, they gave them the keyword, which was really a shot in their own foot, honestly, because then they're like, crap, if we ever make a set, every single person from it has to have Earth X, which means sealed is busted, which means we have to have whatever with Spider Man. They really shot themselves. They had no foresight at all. They had no idea they were going to make that set when they made that figure. It's hilarious. Um, but yeah, they really should have a team ability. Um, I would probably retroactively do a zero point ATA in homebrew games just because a lot of the Earth X figures aren't that amazing. Honestly, uh, no. they're kind of loaded in point costs. They're not amazing. They have some pretty mediocre stats sometimes too. So I think that TA would be fine. Anyways, uh, number three for Malcolm's question is because 2020 cons, they were not available. There was no Origins. There was no Worlds, Memphis, whatever. Uh, what should WizKids do with all those convention exclusives? What other cons do you wish WizKids would uh, put out for 2021? Well, I'll first off say, don't make any new convention exclusives. 
just stop. You should full stop right now in case things get, you know, whatever, like think, be smart. Don't make any more. Just get the ones out that you already have. There's no, there, there's no reason to make any more, but Simeon, uh, how do you think they should distribute these Khan Ali's? Uh, I think that they should release them. WizKids. The product that you made to be sold and you, you produced dials and cards and all that stuff. You should sell those to people like you intended to do last year. You should just sell them. You should release them. So good ways of doing this would be I don't wanna I don't wanna rag on WizKids too much for an obvious uh slight of it. I don't I don't know. But uh they they could sell them to stores, so any retailer that sells uh you know bricks of product or what have you sell them to those stores. Uh, they could do the con in your store again. Um, they are doing that for, uh, what is it? The play, at the home, the home play, whatever they're doing. Play at the home kits. Yeah. The play at home yeah. kits. So Ellie and a map for 10 bucks. Great. People still get their Ellie. They still get a map. Cool. Great idea. That's awesome do that for the convention exclusives that you weren't able to put in conventions this year. Um, you already put like the money into designing them. Just pump them out. I'm sure that like they probably already have a few. I, I almost guarantee that they have a few like already in hand. Um, they just have to like actually mass produce them at this point. So yeah. So doing like a con in your store or something, but geez, just release them. Like, why why is it potentially not going to be released? Please give me the clear see through John Cena. Please give me Sting. I'll even take the Abominabus DC thing, whatever it was called. Oh, the Fulcrum whatever. Yeah. Fulcrum ab 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 Abacus, the counting device. Yeah. Uh I will take With that. Dabra. I will buy it if you release everything else. If you only release that, mm -hmm. I will still just buy that. But please just release everything. Um, even if they just did it on their e-store, how hard would that have been? I don't know why they didn't do that. That seemed like such an easy I idea. I would 100%. They dropped Galactus like on that. Price. I, yeah. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, but yeah. I would 100%. I, I, I'm in complete agreement with Simeon. Nothing I have wrote down was different than what he said. Uh, either con your store style thing that's like the play at home kit or straight up just buy it from the whiz kids store and if you have to make it where it was also like con your store back then i believe you had to buy a certain amount of product and then it would let you like get the le as well i don't remember if it also let you yeah. buy the le or if it just lets you get you just got it or whatever but i'd be like you're yeah, like it was hey on buy a brick of the awful set that is house of x and then you can have <laughs> john cena i'd be like well i guess i'm getting a brick of house of x then shoot you know like Please don't make it that much. Good Lord, to be ridiculous, especially for like a 15 to $20 uh, figure. Um, so, but yeah, seriously, just, or you could honestly, most of those Connellys are what? Like the Duke motorcycle was like 20 bucks. You could add five bucks to it and I'd pay for it. 25 bucks, sure, for a oh, double yeah. box. $15 for a single, make it $20 for a single. It's, you know, it's a lot to pay for, but I'd feel better because now that price that I'm not spending on airfare, gas, or... A hotel and then also buying to get into a convention is now just like i'm just buying a figure straight up which i'm totally cool with you know yeah, so for sure by all means please guys just seriously just do that yeah. the one exception uh, would be like sure, winnables just do it and i, don't I just, sell exactly to, just, to sell <laughs> just sell the winnables just sell the winnables too just sell them sell them that did happen to lady phoenix but uh yeah Yep. Uh, so question four. <laughs> because of 2020, the way we play Heroclix has changed. Example, more online play. That's pretty much the only example. Uh, how much of these changes will continue for future years of the game? Uh, I said, hopefully none of these changes will continue. It would be awesome for venues to get enough people in that online play is completely unnecessary. Um, I will add the caveat that like some people just don't live in places where they're like easily accessible. Like 
I think Calder has to walk to a train station so that he can be driven to the nearest stagecoach so that he can go into to Rainbow. Um, that's the only, it's a mm. five day journey to get to rainbow for Calder to play. Something like that, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, uh, realistically there are Ten people that I live, get to Omaha. <laughs> I have like 17 venues around me and none of them are open. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's true. It feels like it is, but, uh, there are people that live, uh, outside of not necessarily a venue. They might have like a comic shop or a game venue, but uh, there there are places where Heroclix is just dead. So I am more than will- willing to concede that online play should continue because there's a lot of people that would like to play, just don't have a venue within reach that is accessible for that. But realistically, for me especially, I would love if online play for me was not something that I had to resort to. It would be awesome if I could just go to my normal venues again and like roll actual dice, move actual pieces, uh, twist those little dials until they break, um, open actual boosters, stuff like that would be awesome. So as far as the way 2020 changed the way we played hero clicks, I think it did not change it necessarily for the better. Um, Online play is not an amazing way to play a collectible miniature game. It is about the 3D sculpted miniatures. And as I've said multiple times, online play does not represent 3D sculptures. Uh, At best, Roll20 is a flat 2D plane. And Tabletop Simulator has 3D dice, but it's still flat renderings of... Yeah. Yeah, of figures on on the sculpts. So, um, yeah, uh, I think part of the reason why online play isn't amazing for me is it's also not like a WizKids official thing. It would be cool if WizKids was given the funding to actually put together an awesome, and I think it's easy enough nowadays, uh, for a company the size of WizKids to get an actual game out there that works uh i'm not saying that it would be like perfect but it would definitely be better than their original hero clicks online game um and with games like hearthstone and magic and stuff just like completely blowing up like super doing amazing i don't necessarily want whiz kids to go the way of loot boxes but if it helps them out and they can actually sustain an online community that would be the way that i'd rather it go something where like you it's like a free to play and you uh, can use like booster codes or receipts for like your real life purchases and download like your hmm. pieces somehow or something. Well, that's sort of what they did when they had a hero hooks online. I remember for a while there when you bought like when you got an Ellie figure like that Iron Man movie, Iron Man three Ellie, and then like the, Avengers starter set, the uh, X-Men starter set, like all those GSX starter set around that time, all those things came with codes and there, there wasn't online. Um, it was just bad. I think it was just bad to play on or something because yeah. when you bought the real figures, you got a code. It must have just been really horrible to try to play on. It was a little obviously- early. Uh, it was a little yeah. early jumping the gun. So I think it's made them a little skittish of trying it again because they definitely had the like a solid foundation. Uh, some of the things that they really missed the mark on was not having a like golden age pull list that people could use, um, not having a ton of maps to choose from, and then not having dedicated servers. Because I remember the few games that I played on HeroClix Online were extremely laggy, extremely buggy. There wasn't a good tutorial tutorial uh, to show you how to actually play the game. And so it was just, all around, it was like a very awful experience, and nine times out of ten, it would crash like mm. before you could even complete a game, and then you wouldn't load. You wouldn't load back into the same game as you were before. You would load back into the lobby and have to start looking for a game. So it was just kind of bad all around. But I think technology has definitely progressed since they first tried it. Um, mm. Yeah. Hopefully, it won't be needed. But I think for like the people that 
can't make it to a normal venue, it would be awesome to have something that's actually like a legitimate Heroclix experience or closer to an actual Heroclix experience rather than Roll20, which is cropped pictures with weird borders. And Mm -hmm. that's about as good as it gets for that. Yeah, I don't have much to say about online play. The worst part about it, in my opinion, is the no the no human interaction. I'm not I'm not an introvert. I love hanging out with people. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, and like the in between rounds of a tournament, you're sort of you know you're talking with your buddies, you're whatever, maybe discussing trades, stuff like that. You know, it's just good. It's good to hang out with people. That's just awesome. Strike up conversation, do whatever. And online tournaments, at least a lot of the ones I've been in. You play your one game and then all right, see you bye. Yeah. You know, if it's a if it's a if it's an ROC one where you have to wait around in the Discord for the next one, a lot of the times people are just kind of muting themselves in yeah. that. So it's kind of a bummer. So there's just kind of nothing there. And it's yeah. a, that just sucks. To go you know, along I don't with I don't I go I really it. love those like small moments at tournaments like uh, nationals or something, when someone you know is like in the top eight or something like that. And you're like walking around, you're kind of like watching them and stuff. And then you see someone else that is like a mutual friend. So I'll like walk up to Kevin and I'll be like, Hey, who's Lucas playing against? And he'll be like, Oh, he's playing against so-and-so that person's playing like this and this. And like, we just kind of like sit there and stare and like watch the game. And just those little, like, uh, not really like, uh, bonding moments, but, uh, just like the, camaraderie of having like a mutual friend doing well in like a tournament is really lost online to me like there's no sure i can like pop in on like the thing and like listen to him play but um it, it's just a much different experience at like a convention where i can physically watch them like do well i can because it's never me i'm never the one doing well but i can physically watch someone else <laughs> Fill fulfill my dreams. You didn't have to tell us yeah. that. We knew. Uh, we knew. <laughs> yes, everyone's aware. Uh, top eight in 2018 teams. Uh, <laughs> that's that's where I peaked. You got I'm you got t- top 16. <laughs> we made top eight. Slow down there. Slow no, 2018. There. 2018. Oh, never mind. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you you weren't yeah. there. Um, yeah, well, yeah. That's you, correct. Your team Sorry, kicked me bad. out of top eight in uh, 2019. Uh, yes at least nationals um but yeah, yeah no just feeling like the tournament atmosphere in like person is so much better uh walking around seeing like the battle royales going on hearing people like shout for joy or like a table laugh mm. because yeah. something ridiculous just happened all those little hero clicks moments that are just like amazing are completely lost on online because you can only watch one game at a time and even then you can't really like participate you can't really like interject with like the other people that are watching because you have to you know you have to give the people that are playing their space while in person uh you can just watch to like your heart's content from like a distance or whatever and so that's something that i i really miss and I completely forgot what the question was even about, but uh, good side tangent. Yep. We can just go ahead and move on to number five, I suppose. What was a positive thing in Heroclix that happened in 2020 that should continue into 2021? Off the top of my head, it's pretty hard to think of. Simeon, do you have anything? <laughs> yeah. Other than nothing, uh, I don't want to go back into that. So I will say... Uh, one of the positive things that happened in Heroclix is the community putting together some really cool prizing for tournaments. Um, Ares Edge ran a charity tournament, and there was just like a mm. ton, an absolute ton of people donating prize support, uh, donating like time and money, and some people not even participating, just donated the Helping Hands probs. Stuff like that was really cool. Uh, I know it's happened before, so it's not like this is a new thing, but it was uh, one of like the few reprieves in 2020 that was like a really cool thing that I personally experienced. I was part of like the tournament, so it was really cool to like see it in person, quote unquote in person. Um, but yeah, it was it was just really cool to see the community coming together to put together like a cool prizing for a tournament, uh, mostly for the love of the game rather than for profit. Like there was no ulterior motive to that tournament um 
they weren't like Ares wasn't running it to make money so he needed like the community to help and the community delivered and that was really cool it would have been cool if uh, all the tournaments that were ran this year were run with the same kind of mindset yeah for sure man for sure um, so I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say two things. One about the community, and then one about WizKids themselves. Uh, what I liked from the community was the not nationals tournament that Grover put on in Indianapolis, the National Guard thing. Uh, I love that. Uh, we need more three day big events that isn't run by WizKids, that isn't run by The Rock or Majestics or anyone. Where it's just dudes, you know, just normal hero clicks guys. There's no anything else. I'm just like, Hey man, we're just going to run an event. He had some D and D tables. He had some painting sessions. I think he was supposed to have a lot more going on, but not as many people showed up, which is, you know, kind of to be expected. But, uh, but yeah, like we need more events like that being held. Cause I love that. It was, it felt real. It wasn't, uh, locked inside of a convention center that I got to pay 70 freaking dollars to just get into. It's so like, and play hero clicks with the same people. I play hero clicks at other events or online or whatever, mostly the same people anyways. Um, you know, and it sort of felt like Memphis a little bit. Memphis was cool because, like, you had to pay parking, but it was free to get into, which is gnarly. Um, but, yeah, I loved loved the Not Nationals event. It was great. It was just good to play Hero Hooks in person again. But more importantly, it was a non-WizKids, non-ROC ran event, and I thought that was really cool community coming together like that. Uh, what I did like that WizKids did this year has nothing to do with lack of play, but as far as set design goes, I love the superior foes of Spider-Man. Goodness gracious, I said it again. Spider-Man and Venom, absolute carnage. <laughs> Spider-Man sets just get me, man. Oh, my gosh. Too many superior S's and foes, all this. Anyways, including these. Including Venom and Carnage. Yeah, those ones. You know, it was yeah. technically, it's technically right. It's just true. It's not wrong. Uh, but I loved, I loved the chases. People can hate them if they want. That's cool. Um, I liked them. It was creativity on WizKids' part, and then whoever they hired to do all the different art drawings and everything. It was cool. It was unique. And I just like seeing creativity like that in the world. Uh, it's really cool. It makes our game board way more unique. You know, it's always Marvel and DC slogging it out. But now it's like George Washington, Spider-Man, you know, Joan of Arc, Gwen of Arc. It's hilarious. It They each had their own little worlds that are built through names of powers. And I love that. So that creativity, I want WizKids to continue uh, when they can, I don't know if DC is easy to work with and will no, let them do that. Probably not. not. <laughs> I know WWE definitely won't let them do that. Um, so, but Marvel yeah. is just cool. You know, I know DC I'm a Marvel is... fan and I know people are going to feel yeah. biased, but it lets them have more creativity and for it. I remember a lot of people like poo pooing the idea of uh, WizKids coming out with like these, they're like, oh, like they're just like making up figures. And it's like, what do you think? the creators that like marvel do what do you think like the artists and the writers do like they that's literally what they do that's the whole like universe is built on people just making things up and yeah like they were just characters like out of place and time and whatever uh known characters yeah. in like different kind of like universes but that's like part of like the fun to me uh especially but uh yeah i i don't think dc will ever do it um and not necessarily for a bad reason. DC has different rights for their artists. So their artists get to own like different properties of their characters, their creative, their creations. Uh, whereas like Marvel is kind of like more of a, like we own the whole thing. We have like more say in it kind of thing. So Marvel is able to allow these like separate companies to uh, handle like new creations that like Bendis did or something like that. They're allowed to like twist them a little bit more. Um, but yeah, besides uh, WizKids is like being able to do that. It would be amazing if like Spider-Man 1776 appeared in like a one shot or like a series one day. That would oh, be yeah. a really awesome, like little throwback series, like a five issue, uh, like, you know, um, Miguel O'Hara appears in 1776 and has to assume the role of General Washington because he's got the flu or something. Uh, who knows? But whatever. Like it would just be a really cool thing that, like, hey, that started in Wiz like that started from WizKids. That was a HeroClix thing first, and now it's like in print. That would be awesome. And so I would yeah, totally buy one shots of all these characters. I think they're cool. They're oh, cool, yeah. man. I would too. Yeah. Uh, just to like show marvel that it was like a great opportunity that they gave WizKids. i would definitely buy into them 
even if the story. I would think comic fans bad. would like him. Like there was way wackier, worse things in comics than like this. Oh yeah, Spider Hammerai. You know, like well, so. I mean, I don't remember who did sixteen seventy two, but that's probably one of my favorite like X Men stories, and it really oh, like, 1602. 1602, yeah, and it yeah. hardly has any real like X Men stuff going on. There's like some people having powers, some people like doing a few things, but it's more of like world building and uh, character development beyond like just, the X Men like, had like their own mini, kind of their own mini story in that, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't as crazy prevalent. But it was still interesting. The X Men coming to the new world to a place where they may be more accepted uh, was cool. I really yeah. I liked it a lot. I thought it was neat. The, the, then they flew a boat. That was so cool. Oh, yeah. uh, Professor X and Jean Grey just flying that boat. It's pretty sick. Yeah. Uh, Magneto yeah, I was so himself from a uh, witch burning. Yeah. Or whatever that was. Yeah. I don't remember. I would love a 1602 sub theme. Get me a 1602 set. It wouldn't be very big. Make it a sub theme in some weird Marvel set. I don't care. That's what I really want. Earth X with the 1602 sub theme. Let's make it happen, Cap'n. We need 1602. That'd be great. Uh, Anyways, last question. What are your hopes and dreams for 2021 in Heroclix and outside of Heroclix? Oh, Malcolm, outside of Heroclix. It's a little mushy. Uh, ben Simeon, what are your hopes and dreams for Heroclix? There's an outside? Calder, you, There's... you never told me about this outside. You said that Heroclix is all life. Uh, Don't, listen to, Don't Clicks, listen to him. Don't listen to I feel like I kind of already said this. Um, my, my hopes and clicks is that we are able to, like, personally, we are able to go back to our venues. I truly hope that all the new players that we, we started building up, like, a really good new player atmosphere. And we started getting, like, a bunch of new guys in. And I truly hope that once we start playing in person again, that those new people come back. That they didn't just, like, forget about uh, Hero Clicks and that they, like, truly, like, want to play again. Um I feel bad that I didn't get any of their contact info, so I can't even do, like, roll 20 with them or anything like that. Mm. But uh, that's one of my, like, my biggest hopes is that once we start playing again, that those guys show back up. Um, I'd love for all of our normal venues to start getting regular play, regular, like, purchases, stuff like that again, rather than uh, Hero Clicks only showing up, like, once every three months when a new set drops kind of thing. Uh, I'd really like to be able to support them and show them that like we're we're here and like uh, the magic community is like always outweighing us as far as spending goes. So they're always outweighing us as far as spending goes. So it'd be really cool if uh, we could start going back and at least like showing the shop owners and stuff that like, you know, our community does like help them out. And so they should support us. Um, yeah, because I always feel like Hero Clicks not necessarily gets like a a bad rap, but it always feels like we play second fill- fiddle to uh, Magic, at least when it comes to um, like money that comes into the, In the shop, shop kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I I know like I'm not going to personally go in and drop like five hundred bucks on Hero Clicks. But it is great when, like, you have, like, a steady, like, 8 to 12 people or something like that that show up at, like, a venue and, like, everyone buys a drink, everyone buys, like, a snack, maybe one dude buys, like, some boosters kind of thing. It's great to, like, have that kind of atmosphere because the shop owner is great. Like, he's – the shop owner is happy to see Mm -hmm. you, uh, whoever the shop owner is. Um, Even Becky is always happy to see me even though I only stop in once a month nowadays. Um, But – it's great that they're like happy to see us. They're happy for us to like spend our money there and they want to provide us like that cool atmosphere, uh, to play the games. And it's just kind of sad that like there's these big empty gaming halls kind of things, uh, with no one popping into like, you know, sit around and talk and stuff. Uh, and then as far as outside of hero clicks, um, I don't know. My hopes for 2021, uh, I the lottery is up to like $410 million. <laughs> That'd be sweet. Uh, I'd do so many crazy things with that money. Uh, you'd never hear from me again because I would buy the internet. 
Is that enough money? Uh, to not internet? sure if you're allowed to do that. I already know what you would do with the lottery money. So uh, I personally really hope you win the lottery. I think I that would, would be buy great. Twelve uh, cases of House of X. Is that enough money? <laughs> Is that I don't know I don't know the concept of high yeah, money. Is that enough? You definitely got to. Nah, it's probably it's probably in the right ballpark. I'd say I'd say you're close. Um, as far as clicks goes in 2020, uh, honestly, I just want WWE to come out. Like it's pretty it's a pretty low bar. Uh, I'm kind of used to not playing in person. Uh, I got spoiled on it when I, you know, moved a little closer to a venue. So kind of mad at myself because like for five years, whenever I was playing Hero Clicks, I never had a local venue. I always, you know, Skyped to the friend, whatever, played it in real life slash online like that for the majority of my Hero Clicks career. So being able to go in tournaments and travel with all these guys, it's really just a blessing. I'm really thankful for that. And it sucks when stuff like that gets taken away. So, you know, hopefully try to make it to more live events this year. Uh, and then, yeah, actually, our venue sort of had new people kind of coming in, too. Like, there was, like, a pretty big surplus for the Captain America uh, sealed we did. So, uh, some younger kids. We had a lot of kids at our venue, but I think it's fine. Everybody was a kid at some time, so you can't hate them too much, even if they are pretty freaking annoying. Not so, Benjamin Button. It's just the way it is. All right, I'm going to ignore what Simeon said. <laughs> uh, and then, as far as uh, personal stuff goes... I'm sort of making it a year where I just like kind of try all the stuff that I'm even like half interested in. You know, I'd be like, man, I wonder if I'd make a good professional wrestler. So I've, you know, signed up for these classes. Uh, a few other things. I was always interested in like American Ninja Warrior. Uh, there's an American Ninja Warrior gym in Sioux Falls. So I might try to like go to that or I might try to do normal training for it as well. I think that'd be really cool to try to audition for American Ninja Warrior. Um, stuff like that. I would like to act more, maybe try to be in something that's like a bit bigger. Do you guys know anybody and they're looking for super crazy, handsome, studly men uh, to be in movies? Uh, you guys know my contact information. Call me up. Anybody that's associated. I know how the industries work. It's all about who you know. It doesn't matter how good you are. It's about who you know. We still have to be good, but it's about who you know, really. So, uh, yeah, I just want to try new stuff like that pretty much. It's basically it's going to be my year. You know, I spent a lot of 2020 sitting in my chair playing doom eternal and like video games and stuff and i felt so unproductive so i'm, I'm just gonna try stuff live like i was dying uh as a famous uh country western singer has said before so anyways that's uh that'll be the wrap to malcolm's questions there thank you so much malcolm for sending us those questions really appreciate it if you want to send us questions you can do so at our facebook page dial h for hero clicks our instagram twitter dial h for hero clicks and our email which is dial h for hero clicks at gmail.com all spelled out all one word no caps no spaces there ain't no spaces in your email you crazy person on to the jedi legends hero clicks tip of the week you don't want to sell me death sticks i don't want to sell you death sticks you want to go home and rethink your life i want to go home and rethink my life so Jedi Legend says, think of Barrier as a temporary blocking terrain, because it is, and it can be destroyed by a capital range or capital close destroy action, making it hindering terrain. Don't forget to remove the hindering markers when the barrier would normally come down too. It's a great tip. I took full advantage of this when uh, the Joker's Wild Green Lantern had his free barrier marker and his free wall marker that he could place. Uh, another thing for Hero Clicks that I think should continue well into 2021 is all the awesome content on our YouTube channel. You can check it out. Uh, just go to YouTube, type in Dial H for Hero Clicks, we'll pop right up. If you want to see people play Hero Clicks with Extreme Rules, doing all sorts of WWE themed challenges in between rounds of a WWE only game, you can check that out on our Extreme Rules series, as well as the promos we cut for Extreme Rules. If you want to see uh, us do a Hot Ones version of a Hero Clicks game where we eat hot wings in between rounds of a Hero Clicks game and watch our brains and mouths absolutely melt and burn up in flame in the most painful Hero Clicks game you may watch. Check that out on our Hero Clicks Hot Ones video. We also do fun little skits from time to time, and we do our weekly series, which is Thursday Throwdown, uh, which we played almost our close to last Golden Age set. So Thursday Throwdown is going to be changing here in the future. Uh, but we may also go back through and play all the indie sets as well. We're almost out of Golden Age five-figure booster sets, which is cool. So I am 
very happy with the way Thursday Throwdown is going. But we do a lot of cool stuff on our YouTube channel. It doesn't get as much love as our podcast. That's okay. A lot of it's very long format. And I know people don't watch crazy long format videos. But yeah, definitely check all that stuff out. If you uh, want to get some merch, uh, we do sort of have a merch store on Redbubble. Uh, I just showed the cool Patreon stickers. So really, I'd prefer everybody support us on Patreon before they go to Redbubble. But if you want to get like t-shirts of those, you can get all the stickers on Redbubble as well. But if you want to get them on t-shirts or mugs or any of this random stuff that I'm not going to give away on Patreon, feel free to do so. Redbubble.com, type in Dial H for Heroclix. We'll show up there. Uh, if you support us on Patreon at the $3 tier, and honestly, $3 and higher, uh, I'll probably throw in a sticker every once in a while if you give 5 bucks or 10 bucks or whatever. I know $7 is the one where it gets both the token and the sticker on Patreon. Uh, but if you want to support us on Patreon, you'll be allowed into our patron-only Discord. Uh, so all y'all that are in the Prince tournament right now will be thusly kicked out once that's over. Trust me, I will be cleaning house. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> support us on Patreon. If you enjoy the content we do, uh, one dollar means the world to us. So we really appreciate it, guys. That is all I have to say, Simeon. Yeah. Before we go, I do want to do a little update on the Prince tournament since Calder message men mentioned it. Jeez. Um, so we haven't really talked about it since uh, since uh, we stopped accepting people for it. Uh, we ended up with 20 total people, which made the pods weird. Um, so we decided to do pod play because... It just makes these online tournaments extremely easy to run. People can make their uh, games up as they need. Uh, the other optional format would be me pairing everybody up and then having to wait until everybody in that pairing was done. And that just takes way too long because maybe one person can't play until Thursday. So we're getting like one round done a week kind of thing. And that just seemed silly. I didn't really want to do that. So we went with pod play. The one downside to pod play is that if you don't have a exponential number, like a 16 or 32 or 8 or something like that, um, when you cut to top, when you cut like the top of like the pod, it's a weird cut. So we ended up with 20 people. So we had an even amount of pods. We had five pods of four, which is great. But uh, what we ended up having to do is doing a top eight cut because I really didn't want to buy round for the top uh, cut. Well, the top eight cut would have cut two of the people that should have gone on to the next round. And that just seemed real bad. That seemed like real bad form to have pod play top two go forward and then two of the pods top two don't go forward. That seemed bad for whoever those top two people end up being. I wouldn't have wanted to be in that situation. So what we ended up doing was uh, making a bottom bracket for this tournament. So um, anyone that isn't in the tournament isn't aware of this. But what uh, if you're interested in the tournament, this is a little update. So since there was 20, we are going to do the pods with a top eight cut. So as I just said, two people that are in second place in pods, uh, at least that's how it should work out two people that are in second place, maybe somebody that's in like a high third somehow. Um, but two people in second place will not make top eight. They will end up going into a bottom bracket that will be the bottom 12. Now, 12 also doesn't do a pretty easy top cut either for single elimination. It would cut to top six, which would then cut to top three, and that's just weird because then somebody in the top four technically what would be top four or single elimination uh, gets a buy round and that's bad as well. So out of the bottom cut top 12, the people with the highest ranking, which would be the people that would go forward in the normal tournament, but are going to the bottom tournament. Follow along with me. I know this is, this is a lot of weird um, stuff. I'm it's, with you. I'm trying, deep, but I'm with you. Uh, so two of the people that should have progressed, but will not, because of like their uh, their standing in the pod, uh, let's say they they won two games, lost one game, but they didn't score a lot of points. Those two people, rather than going forward and winning potentially a brick, 
uh, five boosters for second, three boosters for third, and two boosters for fourth. Rather than being in that bracket, they will drum, drop to the bottom bracket, which instead of being for boosters, the bottom bracket's first place will get $75 in... Uh, let's just say store credit to somewhere. Um, seventy-five dollars in store credit for first, and twenty-five dollars in store credit for second for the bottom bracket. Um, I decided to do that because I felt like if you've already gone through your pod, there's not really a great incentive to stick around unless I was going to present a good incentive. So. Even somebody that like came out of their pod in the very bottom, they lost three games, zero points. They still can potentially come back to win uh, this seventy-five dollar like first first prize out of the bottom bracket. Since uh, two people from two pods that should have gone forward in the tournament will technically be dropped to the bottom bracket. Uh, that also felt really unfair. It felt unfair that two people who should have continued in the tournament would be tr instantly dropped for no reason, just because the way it worked out and it was easier for me. I didn't want to do buys in the top bracket. Uh, so the way that we ended up coming away with this is the top four of the bottom bracket get a buy, which will be the top four get a buy, and then the very bottom eight of the bottom bracket will play. That'll leave four people in the bottom bracket and then four people with a buy, and then it'll be top eight, and this is all single elimination at this point. So the people that did well, but not the wellest in the pods, um, they don't get completely uh, just run over because of the way this tournament is. So they still get a little bit of a bonus with that buy round. They still get like into the top eight instantly, uh, which is, in my opinion, it's the fairest way. It's still a little unfair to the two people that should have progressed, but it's the fairest way that we could do it without doing a buy round later in the bracket. And to me, that's just super unfair. If someone gets a buy round into the finals or a buy round into top four, I feel like once it's single elimination, there shouldn't be any buy rounds. Uh, of course, the bottom bracket does have a single buy round, but at least it's for the people that should have technically progressed to the higher bracket. So it's a little bit of a caveat to them. It's a little bit of a cop out. It's um, not the greatest way of doing things. And hopefully if we run a tournament similar to this with pod play, uh, we'll probably just end up cutting it off at 16 until we get to like 32. If we get to 32, um, the extra four people were welcome, but it really made it a headache for, uh, the way brackets and pods worked out. So would not wish to do it this way again, but it is what it is. So there's going to be a bottom bracket and a top bracket for the Prince tournament. And then in addition to that, uh, I've been tallying all the build totals because originally uh, that's what the fellowship prize was going to be, was going to be whoever's build cost the most was going to get uh, the fellowship prize. Instead, it's going to be the bottom bracket. I'm just going to shift gears and uh, whatever person wins the bottom bracket gets the fellowship and then second gets a secondary prize in the bottom bracket. Um, so it's all worked out, but I still wanted to calculate everybody's build totals. So, so far, the lowest build total goes to Brian Dormeyer of the Evil mm. Clicks fame with a disgustingly low $811. Brian, look Ugh. at yourself Ugh. in the mirror and please just know you're worth more than $811 yeah. builds. To be my, fair, if I looked at myself in the mirror my and I saw Brian Dortmeyer, I wouldn't want to look in the mirror anymore. Well, the first thing I would do is take my beanie off. The second thing yeah. I would do... <laughs> That's not helping anybody. I don't know what you think that's doing. No, uh, but yeah, Brian Dormeyer, uh I haven't calculated everyone's total 
yet. But Brian Dormeyer is coming in at the very bottom with $811 for his build. Shame on you. Uh, coming in in first currently, uh, we've got about five builds left to calculate, is Eric Mulherin with a impressive $1,394 for his build total. Um, I would have liked it to push the $1,500 mark, but a very good effort on Eric Mulherin's part. Um, in this particular build, it is not very easy to uh, really like ramp it up. Uh, in a Golden Age build, it might be a little bit easier. Something that includes ID cards. But uh, still, almost $1,400 is very impressive for a 300-point uh, modern build. So uh, kudos to Eric Mulherin for now. Uh, once I figure out the rest of them by next week, we will know who, th who the true champion, whether they win or lose, of this tournament is. Uh, depending, of course, entirely on build cost. That's the only thing that truly matters in Heroclix is how much you can spend. And speaking of how much you can spend, uh, go on over to CoolStuffInc.com. They currently exactly. have some uh, House of X figures. So you can buy singles, you can buy bricks, you can buy boosters. You can't buy cases anymore. They're all sold out of cases. But uh, that's fine. Who wants a case anyhow? I hear cases are bad for this set. Uh, but no... Uh, if you're going to buy into this set, my suggestion is buying singles. That's the only way I'm going to do it. You can even buy the play-at-home kit with the Rogue and the map. I've already got one of those on order. Uh, not through Cool Stuff, it's through a local store. But if I was going to go through Cool Stuff, I would pick one of those up as well. It's only 10 bucks. If you buy $100 or more, it's free shipping. That's an awesome thing to throw on for 10 bucks. I always love new maps. That Rogue isn't the worst thing I've ever seen. It's kind of bad, but it's not the worst thing I've seen. But really, I'm paying 10 bucks for a map. Um, but yeah, uh, Cool Stuff's prices aren't terrible right now. Uh, I'm going to wait a little bit till they drop a little bit more. But I'm probably going to miss out on some of the chases that I want. So if you don't want to miss out on those chases, make sure to pick them up before they run out. And for more Cool Stuff, check out CoolStuffInc.com. As always, happy trails. <laughs> Mud, 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 mud,